Hey guys, I am here with another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a combination lock. And this is actually a fairly customizable but very simple and compact custom, uh, combination lock. So, I am here in my vault in Cold Mountain Springs on the Mount Vale server. You guys may have seen my videos. Please feel free to check those out if you guys want to see some cool videos that my friends and I put up. This vault I actually designed with a door that is always locked unless you have the correct combination to open it up and it leads into the vault where all of my riches are stored. So let me show you guys how to make it. I'm actually on a single player creative version of the Mount Little server right now. I use the world downloader mod in order to get that. I'll put the link in the description. Basically it allows you to save portions or all of a world by just loading the chunks and walking into them and it just saves them as a file for you through that mod even if you're not the admin on the server it's actually a great way to get save files so you can play around with different uh, servers that you guys may want to be on but still want to be able to play them in creative single player mode so again I'll put the link in for the description on that but I'm gonna actually show you guys how this works now um, you may have seen the combination that I'll be using in the video it's two six and eight but it doesn't have to be that combination. You can do any combination that you want. This is pretty customizable. You can even have more than 10 choices. So right now I have zero through nine, but if you want to add in more, you could definitely do that. It is expandable. This is just the space considerations that I had because I have that tunnel that goes down there. I also have a tunnel that wraps around here and then around the back here. So I really had to compact my design. So this is the wiring room inside here behind the wall. I went ahead and put lime wool down so that you guys can see where I'm going to be placing redstone. You don't have to use lime wool, but that's just kind of a visual aid so that you can see where the wiring is going to happen. Uh, you just use any block that you can place redstone on. So it goes down underneath the floor over here and powers this other side of the pistons. So let's actually start there. Let me go ahead and first things first, place sticky pistons down on both sides. And then I'm going to actually put chiseled stone down to actually be my door. You don't have to use that. It's just what I'm deciding to use so that you guys can see the difference between that and the stone. If you want to make it really hidden, you could just put stone on there too or whatever it is that you're building your tunnels out of or entrances. That's pretty much it. So I took the number five out temporarily, just the sign for it so I could get in and out of here, but we'll be replacing that at the end, so don't worry. So let's go into it. Let's actually show you guys how to wire it. Now the very basic concept of this is that you'll be placing a redstone torch on the other side of the wall where I've placed all of these levers, so you notice I placed a lever underneath each one. That's powered off, that's powered on. Now on the other side of the number that you want to be part of your combination lock, you're going to place a redstone torch. So in my case, I'm going to put it here, here, and here. That's two, six, and then eight. Now every other place I'm going to place redstone. So I want to place it starting all the way down here at zero. I want to create this line that goes all the way down from 0 to 9 and also place it on every other spot where there is no redstone torch. What that's going to do is provide a fail safe. So without placing this second line of redstone here flush with the wall in the spaces where you don't have the torch, there is a uh, flaw in this design where it would allow you to basically turn off all of the tor all of the levers and it would still activate because turning off the other levers would have no consequence. But if you place this redstone in here, it acts as a failsafe, and you have to actually turn off the redstone torches, the buttons that are on the other side of the redstone torches, and that will actually be the thing that creates your combination lock. So now that we've got that down, we want to move on to the second section of this combination lock. And again, we're going to place some lime wool down. We're going to place it right here. It doesn't have to be lime wool, just some block that can conduct redstone. Now, you can place this lime wool block anywhere along this line. If you want to, it's just going to extend the line out a little bit further over here. But again, I'm showing you the most compact version that I could come up with. You cannot place it here on the 8th or the ninth spot, these two second to last spots, because you'll run into problems when you're trying to turn the wiring sideways and around this corner. It's going to get jumbled together and not function properly. So this is the furthest over right here by the number 7 in my scenario that I could place this block. Now what I want to do is place a redstone torch on the other side of it right here. Okay, so that torch is now still being powered, this whole line is powered, but when I place a redstone dust on top, it actually inverts the signal, and this redstone torch is now powered off. Now that's key to understanding how this combination lock system will work. Because the next thing I want to do is place redstone dust here and here. 
Now you'll notice if I am actually able to turn off all three of these redstone torches, that's going to power off all of this redstone. And that's going to actually invert this signal and power this on, which then powers the redstone heading off down to the rest of the wiring. So we'll continue to look at that as we go through. But the very next thing you want to do is put another piece of lime wool down right there. And then you want to place a redstone torch on the other side of that to again invert that signal. Now we want to place redstone coming out from that torch, which is currently powered on, and we're going to connect it up to this set of pistons right here. Placing it on the top one will power both of them because the redstone current will travel down one block. If I placed it on the bottom one, it wouldn't travel up far enough to be able to power this top piston. So that's why you need to raise it up just one. So when I place that, you hear the pistons actually activate. So there is power going to them, the pistons are pushed out, and I have that half of the door currently working. I just need to wire up the other half to it too. But before I do that, I want to actually count how many redstone I have, because redstone will only travel 15 blocks before it loses its signal strength, and it won't power anything beyond 15 blocks. So we are going to need to place a repeater along this line, so we want to count and actually see where we're going to need to place that repeater. So coming off of this torch, I have one, two, and then I'm going to turn it three, four five, six, we're going to go down underneath the floor, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Now if I try to place one here, no power coming to it, because that's the sixteenth one. So that's as far as my redstone signal will go. So that means I have to place a repeater here or earlier in order to still keep my signal traveling to the other side. So I can place that there on the fifteenth spot, or, if I want, I could instead place it here. I mean, you can place it anywhere along the line that you want, as long as you still have enough redstone uh, spacing to give it power 15 blocks in each direction. So I'm going to go ahead and along here, and I have enough to get to the rest of the piston system, so that's good. So I place redstone all along here, and again come up to power this top piston, which will power both of them. And there we go. Now the pistons are powered, which means that they are extended, and the blocks that they're connected to should be, yep, shutting the door. So there we go. The vault door is completely sealed right now. The only way to open it is to actually go ahead and get the correct combination. So if we head back here, this is pretty much it. This is the wiring system that you need to make it work. That's it. Now, let's go ahead and test this out. So we can explore a little bit more about how this functions. So again, remember 2 was one of our numbers, so I put the 2 down. Now I need to actually get the other two numbers as well, because right now I have this redstone torch not powered, but these other two redstone torches are powering it. So if I hop back over here, I do the 6, turns off that torch, but again, still, the torch on the other side of this number 8 lever is still powering the entire thing. But when I flip this switch, that's the third and final torch, there we go, it actually opens the vault. So let's look at what just happened here. So I have all three of these torches turned off. This entire line of redstone is depowered. Coming into this block, the signal is inverted, which powers this line here. Then right here, the signal is inverted again, and it has no power going to the redstone, which goes to both sides of this door. So there's no power heading in to these pistons on both sides, which means they are both retracted and our door is opened. Now if we want to go ahead and shut the door, we can just turn off any one of these torches and it's going to recognize that there's still one torch powering it and shut the door again. Now you'll notice there's a slight delay when I open and close that door. You can actually fix that. Uh, you can leave it like this if you're really on a budget and you don't have repeaters to spare but one repeater is actually going to fix the timing and make it pretty much perfect. You want to just put that repeater right here. And again, all of the repeaters, I forgot to mention, they're all on one tick. They're not any further, they're just on the initial default one tick that you get when you first place the repeater down. So replacing that with a repeater actually makes the timing pretty much perfect. Let me show you what I mean. There we go, and there we go. That's it, it's smooth now. So that's what you would do, that's the entire wiring. Let me go ahead and close this up. There we go. And we'll go ahead and just seal this up so that we can see that. And we'll place a number five 
And that is it. Everything's done. Well, let me get a torch too. Just so everything will be perfect. Alright, so now the vault is 100% sealed. So you would walk up to this and go, oh my gosh, a combination lock. But if you know what the combination is, you can open it, walk through, explore the tunnels on the other side, and see the riches within. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Please let me know uh, what you thought of it, of uh, the design and how I compacted it. Let me know if you use it and what you're using it for. I'd love to find out what kinds of things you guys use this to hide, whether it's just your base or if there's a secret room in a base or a vault like this or anything else like that. Just let me know. Um, please comment, subscribe, and check out my other videos too that I have. So thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.